Harvard University have developed a solid state battery that charges in minutes. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to see you. Harvard University have revealed the technology they're using for their new solid state battery. Very different to Toyota, who are basically staying silent, not wanting to tell anyone what's going on with their solid state battery, which has led to some significant questions about its existence. Harvard University, on the other hand, have just revealed that they've developed a new solid state battery that can be charged in 10 minutes or less. Harvard's latest solid state battery breakthrough is really a little key vision into the future, the future of electric cars. If you think that gasoline powered vehicles will still be on sale in 2035, I've got news for you. Technology is advancing rapidly. You see in artificial intelligence, its rate of growth is so fast that the internal combustion engine will almost certainly be dead in 2030. If you want one of those vehicles, if you want a dinosaur, you need to pretty much go out and buy one now. The lithium metal battery researchers developed at Harvard John A. Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Sciences, which is called SEAS, can be charged and discharged at least 6,000 times. That's more than any other pouch battery cell. And it means this battery has a very, very long life cycle. One of the big problems of solid state batteries is, well, they don't last long enough. Harvard say they've worked out the secret to getting a solid state battery to last just as long as a lithium ion phosphate battery, which is really saying something. The research published in Nature Materials describes a new way to make solid state batteries with a lithium metal anode. And I talked about this in a separate video. They said, lithium metal anode batteries are considered the holy grail of batteries because they have 10 times the capacity of commercial graphite anodes and could drastically increase the driving distance of EVs. Our research is an important step toward more practical solid state batteries for industrial and commercial applications. One of the biggest challenges in solid state batteries is the formation of dendrites, which cause the batteries to rapidly degrade. But now the reason for this is that they pierce the barrier that separates the anode and the cathode, causing the battery to short or catch fire when the battery becomes older and more degraded. The dendrites form when lithium ions move from the cathode to the anode during charging, attaching to the surface of the anode in a process called plating. That creates an uneven, non-homogeneous surface on the anode and allows dendrites to slowly take root. With every charge you do, they get slightly worse. When discharged, that plaque-like coating needs to be stripped from the anode and when plating is uneven, the stripping process can be slow and result in potholes that induce even more uneven plating in the next charge, and so on and so on, till eventually the battery degrades. Now, one of the key advantages of solid state batteries is it's is it because they don't use a flammable electrolyte that even with these damaged dendrites, they actually still are very unlikely to catch fire. But it does mean the battery degrades faster than it should. In 2021, the team designed a multi-layer battery that, that sandwiched different materials of varying stabilities between the anode and the cathode. This design prevented the penetration of lithium dendrites by controlling and containing them, but it didn't stop them altogether. However, in their latest research, they've figured out what to do. The researchers are able to stop dendrites from forming by using micron-sized silicon particles in the anode to constrict the lithiation reaction and facilitate a homogeneous plating of a thick layer of lithium metal. In the Harvard researcher's design, when lithium ions move from the cathode to the anode during charging, this reaction is constricted at the shallow surface and the ions attach to the surface of the silicon particle but don't actually penetrate any further. In our design, they said, lithium metal gets wrapped around the silicon particle like a hard chocolate shell around a hazelnut core in a chocolate truffle. Now, because plating and stripping can happen quickly on an even surface, the battery can recharge in around 10 minutes. Now, unfortunately, they didn't specify exactly how big this battery was. I mean, if you think about it, a watch battery can charge pretty damn fast, right? You could probably charge a watch battery in approximately 10 minutes, depending on the battery you use today, using today's technology. But we're talking here about batteries that are big enough to power an electric car. 
The researchers built a postage stamp sized pouch cell version of their battery, which is 10 to 20 times larger than the coin cell made in most university labs. This solar state battery retained 80% of its capacity after 6,000 cycles, outperforming other similar batteries which are already on the market today. Clearly, this is another milestone in the solar state battery frontier. There is numerous countries working on this technology, but Harvard University might be a little bit behind. The reason I say this is because Volkswagen is already driving around an electric car today using a solid state battery. It's testing quantum scape solid state battery, which they say is ready for mass production. I'm not certain that's 100% true, but it seems that quantum scape may be a few steps ahead of Harvard University. So maybe this technology um, will work, but it does seem like Harvard could be behind the number one company in the world, in my opinion, which is quantum scape. Now, does this mean you should wait and not buy an electric car today? Absolutely not. I mean, electric cars today are better than internal combustion engine cars today. So if you're going to go out and buy a car, why would you buy something inferior? That's an internal combustion engine. It's old technology. It's ancient. It's really, in so many ways, an inferior product to an EV. All I'm saying is that in five years from now, you may find that electric cars will charge twice as long and drive twice as far. In fact, it's almost certain that both of those things will happen. Thanks for watching.